Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Try, try, and told, try and told him I'm a beast, bud. What's up, gang? What's up, Welcome gang? to the broadcast. Simon, Simon Arias, Arias here. Arias here. Get, Get ready. It's ready. a new it's day. A new day. What's up, gang? Welcome to another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a it's a new day, and we got to talk about giving back to what gives to you. You got to feed what is feeding what is feeding you. And so, you know, what I've learned is 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 I hope you know over time, and and the people's opinion that I've learned to value the most are the people that see me and and really know the. The real me you know I did a message not too long ago about I'm not as good as people think that I am I'm a human being and so I value the opinion of, of people that are close to me my friends that are close to me my, my wife my children my mom the people that really know me and I think that one area you know thanks to others you know I've learned to to give and be a giver and I think the people that are close to me would all say that that they know that I'm a, I'm a giver and I enjoy giving, but it was a learned behavior. You know, I can't say I always was as excited about giving as I am now, but I've learned that it's cyclical. And so there's a lot more takers than there are givers. And there's, it's a whole lot easier naturally as a person to take than it is to give, you know, you just look at two children uh, you know, I look, think of my, my kids and, and they're just beautiful together. My son is, is two, my daughter is four and they're great together. Like they, they fight once in a while. But if I, if I try to holler at my son, my daughter starts hollering at me. Even if he hurt her, if she gets, if I start making him cry, she starts hollering at me and he does the same thing. But it's, it's not natural for them to want to share their toys in, in, in to just give their toys away or give things you know we've been teaching my daughter to give away her toys to people that don't have toys and and it's just not a natural thing all the time especially as 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 the younger that that you are to learn how to be a giver but what i want you to think about is i think the design in life is is the cycle to give what gives to you feed whatever is feeding you if the ground uh, it gives back the, the in the grass don't give back to the ground then that stops if if the humidity th don't happen then the clouds can't rain and if the clouds rain then the, then the humidity happens and if the humidity happens then then the clouds rain and and so every time that you break that cycle whatever that relationship is will die and so I want you to think like even in your own relationship like if you're married to someone and they keep giving to you and you don't give back to them eventually there's there's going to be there's going to be issues and so anytime you don't give back to what's given to you you kill that relationship you can't keep working the ox you know just think about like a farmer you you can't keep working the ox and not feeding the ox like the the ox is giving to you if you don't feed it the relationship is going to is going to be over. And so I just want to I want to ch challenge you to think about your relationships at home, your relationships in business, your relationships with with your mentors and, and, and parents and people that have done things for you. Are would you say that you're being as good of a giver as you are a taker? And here's the great thing that I think if you take me up on this and test me on this and just try to adopt it, watch what happens. If you're really selfish, watch what happens when you start giving. Because the more you give, the more you receive, the more you're going to get back. It's, it's just I've learned that that this cycle is so true. It's almost hard to stop. The, the more you give some of my best relationships that have been developed that God has blessed me with started because of giving, you know, I've developed a good relationship with, with, uh, Ryan Shazier, you know, that started, but that, that whole, I, I would have never even met him if it wasn't for my youth program and, and inspire minds and us getting, getting connected. And, and, uh, coach Trussell has been a mentor, you know, to me and a friend to me, that whole introduction, just the, that, that whole real intro started through giving and, and so I just want to encourage you to look at all the relationships and make sure that you're being a better giver than you are a taker 
and watch what happens. The, the more you give, the more you receive. And, and when I'm around friends of mine that have business success, world success, okay? Because I, I don't want to say success because they got some money, but I'm, I'm thinking of some friends of mine that do have some money. A uh, friend of mine got a box at all the games here in Pittsburgh. And it's like we get into this battle of, okay, you gave me box tickets to the Penguins games all the time. Uh, you're not paying for all your food that you just ordered, you know, $500 worth of food from the restaurant that I'm a partner in. And then we just keep on like, there's just this, like who can out give the other person because you're not just going to keep giving to me and me not giving something to you. I think it's just a natural, just like Christmas. You know, if somebody gets you a gift, it's awkward if you don't give a gift back, right? So you ought, you ever have somebody's getting you a gift, you find out, you're like, oh, oh shit, I got to hurry up and go get some, I got to go get them a gift. You got to be able to bless whatever's blessing you help whatever's helping helping you okay every relationship that you violate that you watch is going to be cursed okay something it says something about your character when you learn to give what's giving to you whatsoever a man or woman sows so shall you reap and so what are you sowing out there and and I'm going to switch gears into parents and, and business, just leadership stuff. And, and one of the, the small things that is kind of a cousin to, to what I'm talking about is you're, you teach your kids a lot about how to treat you by how you treat your parents. And so in business, if you're leading a team of people and you're disrespectful to your boss and, 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 and you're not giving to your boss and you don't sacrifice for your boss and, or, or whoever's leading you, the people that you're leading, you're going to teach them how to treat you over time by the way that they see you treat your leaders or your parents. Like we, we can't, kids and people can't see hostility and reap love. It's just, it's very difficult. And, and, and so just remember in leadership, whatsoever that you sow, so shall you reap. If you sow serving your people, your people are going to serve you. If you keep serving your people, your people are going to keep serving you. The minute that they keep serving you and you don't serve them is the minute that you're going to watch your business and watch your relationship start to go down, downhill. And so think about what are you sowing in leadership from the way that you're treating the people that are leading you? Because I think almost every circumstance in some way, shape or form in life, some, everybody's a player and everybody's a coach. Everybody's a player and everybody's a coach for the most part at, at, at some point. And so when you're, when you're a player and you have a coach, the way that you treat that coach and the way that you operate in that relationship is is quietly teaching people how to treat how to treat you. And so you know sometimes people don't understand why you know they're not getting along with people or 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 why don't people like me? You know you ever meet somebody like that that just like, you know, I don't understand why the people don't like me or Usually if people don't like you, you're just probably not being nice. People want to come around nice people. Like it don't matter how cute that you are. At some point, being nasty and mean trumps cute. You understand what I'm saying? Like your cuteness and your looks is only going to get you so far. I promise you your attitude in the way that you treat others is going to trump your looks and everything else that you bring to the table every single time, every single time. And so if you want people to start liking you, if you want to have people that, that, that want to be around you more, just be nice to people, H have a, have a positive attitude. Everybody's going through stuff outside of work, outside of the locker room. Everybody has personal things going on. Try not to bring those things, that baggage to the people around you because your energy gives off on them. 
And so it's different when you have a friend and you pull them to the side and you guys are each other's confidant and you and, and, and you you vent to each other and stuff. But in the workplace or in a coaching environment, especially when you're responsible for leading other people, you can't be bringing no negative juju, negative energy into people. You're either a lifter or a leaner, positive or negative. And, and, and so understand that. And, and, and keep going back to keep going back to making sure in your relationships you're not taking in more than what you're willing to willing to feed because you can't expect people to go on sale because you got tired of giving. So now these people got to reduce their value because of you. What what do I mean by that? Like even though. And man, sometimes I want to be real and it's just so hard for me to find the, the words, you know, I, maybe I'm not articulate enough to, to, to really describe it. I, I just, I get afraid of sounding cocky or Eric, that's not it. There's a lot of people doing better than me. There's a lot of people that got more money than me. And, it, 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 but the fact is I don't even need to work anymore. I don't have to do it. I, I, I can survive. Life would be good. But if you look at my day-to-day -day routine and you talk to my people and you watch how I roll with my people, I think, hope, feel, and I'm pretty confident that they would say that they feel me constantly wanting to pour into them and they feel energy wanting to, to pour into them because I can't pick and, I can't pick and say, okay, whew, now that I'm comfortable, I'm going to stop being a giver. I'm going to stop pouring into these people, helping to develop these people, sacrificing, giving them time. I, I'm going to stop giving and pouring into them, but I expect them to give to me. I expect them to keep the business rolling. When I watch people, and I'm blessed to be, to be I have a consulting company with some of the most successful people in our industry. And it's just an honor and a privilege to, I mean, it's one thing when you're coaching rookies. It's another thing when people are actively seeking you out and, and, and paying you to coach them that have already had high levels of, of, of success. I try to bring my A game all the time with these people. But when I see some of them that used to have success, stop having success, it goes back to this principle that I'm talking about. Like you stop feeding what's feeding you. So now you just cash in checks from your business you live in this lavish lifestyle. You driving sweet cars, taking nice vacations, but you stop giving to people that have been given to you. You stop pouring into that business that's been pouring into you. And you and you wonder why have things slowed down? Why why is my business not not thriving? Take a peek at are you giving as much as you used to give when things were thriving? Because you can't expect to get more and give less. Now you can give different, but you can't you can't keep getting and not keep giving. The next thing that that, that I want to talk to you about is is I think too many people think that to be successful or happy, like you always have to be comfortable. Comfortable. Is your workout measured by your comfort? Like I've never said, whoo, man, that was a great workout. I was really comfortable. I was successful. You know, if, if, if somebody's operating a, 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 you know, someone's doing surgery and they're a doctor doing surgery and they had to do open heart surgery and, you know, something didn't work out and it was a failure, but they said, ah, that was I was comfortable. Would you would you say that that's a that's a success? Like we didn't get the tumor, but we had a great time, guys. How many people are trying to measure success with comfort, let alone trying to measure success at all? It's hard to measure that stuff. Stuff that matters is hard to to measure. Like how can I measure how much I love my children? Like it's just hard to even exp I, I I don't know how to measure it, how to show it, how to weigh it out, how to explain it to you. It's hard to measure sometimes what it's going to take in order for you to take your life to the next freaking level. But I can promise you that typically going to the next level, there's going to be some form of pain and discomfort. It's going to be like to have a baby 
a woman gets pregnant and things stretch out and it gets things get uncomfortable and that's the that's the way that you grow if you're a bodybuilder and you're trying to build muscle your muscles break down they get sore and and and, and they grow through discomfort and so you can't be measuring your success by how much comfort that you have and i was having a conversation with with a friend of mine today in the car and uh and, and she was saying well man your phone must be blowing up all day Per, how much is that phone i mean it's just a non sometimes we'll drive seven hours and i don't talk to him one time seven hours straight of just calls boom 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 i've learned how to just be comfortable being uncomfortable i just breathe i don't panic i don't stress and and i'm not saying this to build myself up i, I just want to encourage you to understand that even me and where i'm at i'm not always comfortable things aren't always comfortable the week isn't always comfortable the day isn't always comfortable but i feel happy and i feel alive and and, and, and successful people sometimes use artificial measurements for success for things that are visible like there's a lot of people that are failing but they think that they're winning like they're making money they're having success over here but their heart is empty and 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 they're miserable so it looks like they're winning but they're actually they're actually failing and so if we're going to take it to the next level in that discomfort i think that the the things that make it discomfort uncomfortable is that typically to grow you have to give up immediate gratification for growth you got to give up to go up you got to give up to go up for everything in life that you get or go to the next level and you, you'll see that there's going to be some type of 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 give up to to go up relationship and then you here's people ask me all the time how do you know how do you keep still a good relationship with your kids and, and your spouse and you know things of like that when you work so hard I think it's not only important to know that in order to go up, you got to give up to go up. You got to know what you're not willing to give up. Like I'm just not, no matter what it takes, I'm not willing to give up getting some quality time weekly with my kids. Now, are there times where I'm on a, 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 a trip or a business meeting and I'm gone for five, six days and it changes that week up a, a little bit? Yes. And I miss them when, when that happens. But when I'm here, when, when, when things are normal, you know, and my normal is never freaking normal, but when they're normal for me, you know, 90% of the time, I got a rhythm of like, I'm not giving up getting a date night with Nat, not giving up spending some time with, with my kids, not giving up working out, not giving up eating clean. Like there's just, it's, it's important to know what you got to give up. It's also important to know what you're not willing to give up, what you can't give up, but don't use that as a fallback, as an excuse. Like I'm, I'm telling you on one hand, I'm not willing to give up some quality time with my kids and my relationships. But at the same time, I'm telling you, I'm giving up consistently on a weekly or monthly basis sometime with them to grow others, to grow our business, to make their life better, to make other people's life better. Like there's times I'm driving an hour to inspire minds in Youngstown, getting home at 10, 11 o'clock. I'm giving up an evening from my kids to help out others. And so you, you just, you can't leave, you can't let the kids or the spouse or this one or that one be an excuse. There's 168 hours in a freaking week. You can do it all if you schedule it all and so i just want to encourage you now to give up immediate gratification for growth it, 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 you, you got to be able to give up what you feel like eating right now to get in shape and have growth in that area of your life a month from today two months from today what trade-offs do you need to be making right now that you haven't been making to get in shape are you buying some things that you shouldn't be buying so you can't get into financial shape? Are you eating some things that you shouldn't be eating? Are you drinking some things that you shouldn't be drinking so you can't get yourself in the shape that you want? Like, what are the things that you need to be trading right now? Is it video games? 
Is it too much leisure time, too much TV, too much treats, too much hanging out and partying? Too, what are the things that you know for a fact? You're thinking of this and you just, you're trying to avoid my voice right now. You don't really want to hear me on this because you know it's going to hold you. But hear me out on this one. Don't run from me. Look at the man and woman in the mirror. Think about it for a second because if we, we can't grow in our comfort zone, let's get uncomfortable for a minute. What trade-offs need to be made right now that you haven't been making to take yourself to the next level. Like most people that, I, that I've seen have a barrier that's stopping them from getting to the next level. And oftentimes they know what it is that they can and they should remove that barrier, but they just, they just haven't done it yet. They haven't made that decision or choice yet. And I want to encourage you to Make that decision today. Decisions determine your destiny. The three D's. Decisions determine your destiny. When's the best time? When was the best time to plant a tree? X amount of years ago. When's the next best time? Today. And so maybe you haven't gotten to it yet. We're already in March and, and, and we're looking at our 2020 goals and, and whoop, we already, here's the first quarters down, ladies and gentlemen, and you haven't made the sacrifices that you need to make. You haven't started moving forward with things that you said you wanted to do when that ball dropped in Times Square. Shout out to the Times Square, New York office. If you're listening, let's do it right now. Don't wait for 2021. Remove them barriers. Give up to go up. Be a giver more than, more than you're a taker. All the things that we're, that we're covering, because I can promise you, and this ain't some, some cliche stuff, being around a lot of people, I'm in the people person businesses. I find more people have it than don't have it. More people got it than don't got it. Now, there's got it on different levels. There's got it on, on uh, you know, Tom Brady level as a quarterback and then there's there's got it as a starting high school quarterback I, there's there's levels to it but more often than not i find people that got it they got the tools they just don't bring it out they, they don't make the sacrifices they don't take the risks they don't take the chances they don't they don't stop doing things that are causing them harm and, and dragging them down they can't cut off the negative relationships and so i want to encourage you you got to take care of yourself in order to be selfless and help others, the first thing you need to do is be selfish. That's why when you when you get on an airplane, the first thing they tell you to do is when the mask drops, please put the mask on yourself before assisting any small children or, or, or elderly. Because if you don't put the mask on you, you ain't going to be able to help anybody else. And so be selfish for a minute right now. What are things that you need to do to take care of you, to get you in the best shape that you could be in so you could be the best force version of yourself for this world that you want to serve. And that starts with you getting in shape with you. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the grind cast. Hey, if this helped you out and you found some value, do me a favor and share this with, with, with others that you think we can have some impact on. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Trying, trying, told, trying, told him I'm a beast, blood.